Hello, I'm Roy Bonestell. We're going to meet Viktor Frankl, the internationally famous psychiatrist, writer, and lecturer. He deals with the most common ailment of our time, meaninglessness. Dr. Frankl heals the soul. The survivor of four concentration camps, Viktor Frankl speaks from a profound understanding of man. He says life does have meaning in any and all circumstances. We can learn from Auschwitz, he says. From the Holocaust comes a message of hope. Lesson one could learn in Auschwitz and in other concentration camps in the final analysis was those who were oriented toward a meaning, toward a meaning to be fulfilled by them in the future, were most likely to survive. And this has been confirmed afterwards by American Navy and Army psychiatrists in Japanese prison of war camps, in uh, North Korean prison of war camps, recently in uh, 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 North Vietnamese prison of war camps. Mm -hmm. The orientation toward a future, toward a task, a personal task, waiting for them to be fulfilled in their future, or another person whom they were loving to be met again, to be reunited with them again in the future. This was what was decisively upholding these people. So this, the orientation beyond oneself, the, you see, the question was not just survival, but there had to be a why of survival. The question was survival for what? Mm -hmm. Unless there was something or someone, a person or a cause, to, for whose sake to survive, there was survival scarcely possible. Most of us have never been in the concentration camp experience. We've never had to go through that horror and tragedy. And so one would think that today it would be easier to find meaning in life. And yet. I sense that it's more difficult, in a sense, today than it was in years past. Do you, do you think that? You are absolutely right. Well, why is because that? Because we are living in a society, either in terms of an affluent society or in terms of a welfare state, as we in Austria are living in. Anyway, these types of societies virtually, or at least they are out, virtually to satisfy and gratify each and every human need. Except for one need, the most basic and fundamental need operant in man, the need for meaning. Uh, consumer societies, even creating needs, but the need for meaning, or as I'm used to referring to it, the will to meaning remains unfulfilled. It's what I'm used to as, uh, uh, calling uh, recently the unheard cry for meaning. You scarcely will find any reference to what is the most fundamental and basic concern of man. Neither pleasure nor happiness, nor power or prestige, but originally and basically his wish, his desire to find and fulfill a meaning in his life, or for that matter, in each single life situation confronting him. And if there is a meaning to fulfill, if he's aware, if, if he becomes cognizant of such a meaning, then he's ready to suffer, he's ready to offer sacrifices, he's ready to undergo tension, stress, and so forth, without any harm being done to his, to his uh, health. But if there is no meaning available, no meaning in, uh, in, uh, uh, in his visual field, then he takes his life. Can you imagine a, a situation for a human being which is more uh, full of stress than Auschwitz? Mm and virtually all neurotic symptomatology disappeared in Auschwitz. Mm. And the degree to which suicide took place 
in Auschwitz and Dachau was astonishingly, astonishingly, surprisingly low according to whoever wrote books, psychiatrists writing books on the psychology and psychopathology of concentration camp life. Mm -hmm. and on the other hand, in the welfare state of Austria, a teacher showed me a list of questions his, his students, his pupils, were allowed to ask him. And you know what was top ranking on the list as to it, the frequency of the questions. Suicide among youngsters of 14 to 15 years of age in a welfare state such as Austria. Suicide. There were, there were virtually no stress or tensions because they are pampered. Mm -hmm. Nobody uh, allows himself to challenge them. What young people need are ideals and challenges, personal tasks, and, and to begin with in the first place, examples, personal examples, mm -hmm. but not the cowards. Who are coward people who don't venture to confront them with anything because they might become angry because they are challenged. Neither parents nor school teachers are courageous enough to challenge them. Don't arouse tensions. Mm -hmm. Don't create tensions. Don't put stress on them. It is, is well known in, among uh, uh, neurologists and psychiatrists that placing too high demands on people is even less dangerous than placing too little demands on them. Mm -hmm. See, uh, uh, people are today, they are not over demanded, they are under demanded. Mm -hmm. Another thing that occurs to me though is that we could always find meaning in some of the traditional institutions we had going for us, the church for example, um, or the family, you see. And this seems to be diminishing these institutions and they have less importance, it seems to me, in our lives today. And this would frustrate our search for meaning, it seems. You are right in several respects. First of all, what I've described already uh, uh, 30 years ago and predicted and foreseen, I might say, the emergence and today the presence of what I call the existential vacuum the feeling of meaninglessness, the feeling of emptiness, the feeling, uh, this, a sense of futility, which now takes over the place of inferiority feelings, the existential frustration, which now takes over the place of sexual frustrations in contrast to the times of Sigmund Freud. Now, this mass neurosis, meaninglessness, is to, uh, to be explained, as I see it, mainly in two directions. First, in contrast to an animal, man is not told by drives and instincts what he simply must do. Furthermore, in contrast to man in former times, today he is no longer told by traditions and traditionally and universally held values what he should do. Now, neither knowing what he must do nor what he should do, he some, sometimes seems no longer to know what he basically wishes to do. And what is the consequence? Either he just wishes to do what other people are doing, this is conformism, mm -hmm. or else he just does what other people wish him to do, and this is totalitarianism. Now, this is the origin of the existential vacuum. Mm. But you see, since traditions are on the wane, traditions are crumbling, there is a de decay of traditions, not only in the field of religion, mm. but generally, the, uh, those people who are most affected by this loss of traditional values are naturally the youngsters. But in terms of our traditional values and our religious institutions on the wane, as, as we say, can one find meaning in life without a faith in God? Meaning can be found by each and every person, also by a person who is not religious. I would concede personally, admit that 
it is easier to find meaning in life if you are a religious person. But on the other hand, I would have to add, to push forward immediately by adding that what can you do? You cannot command, you cannot order anyone to believe, no. you see. Belief must, or faith must grow within yourself organically. You have to let it go. You just uh, shouldn't uh, contribute to the repression of faith. But in principle, each and every person can find a meaning in life. Me meaning can be found by each and every person irrespective of his age, irrespective of his sex, irrespective of his educational background, irrespective of his in, uh, IQ, irrespective of his personal character structure or make psychological makeup, even irrespective of environment, just think of Auschwitz, mm -hmm. of prisons, and of the people who are very successful and yet bored. And finally, it turned out that meaning is available to man in principle, irrespective of whether or not he is religious, and if he is religious, to which denomination mm -hmm. he belongs. <clears throat> Let's explore just for a moment how we find that meaning. Let's say that I'm just an average sort of chap. I have never been through the concentration camp, so I don't have that, that uh, I haven't been tested through suffering, for example. I live a, live a very comfortable life. Perhaps I don't have a belief in God. Maybe I'm bored with my job. Maybe I'm bored with my family. <clears throat> but you say I can still find meaning in my life, and it's important I find it. Where do I find it? What do I, what do I latch on to? There are three main avenues, as it were, leading up to meaning fulfillment. The first way, the first road on which you may arrive at meaning to fulfill, to find and to fulfill, is through work. Through creating a work or doing a deed. Second, through love, through experiencing someone in his very uniqueness, and this means loving. Love is more than just sex. On the contrary, human sex is more than mere sex, precisely to the extent to which it serves as the bodily incarnation, I may say, a mode of expression, the physical mode of expression of one's love, of a personal togetherness, of getting hold of another person in his very uniqueness mm -hmm. and seizing the uniqueness of another person. This equivalent is the very definition of love. Anyway, you may enrich your inner life through experiencing something, culture, nature, art, or whatever, through, through research, through experiencing something or encountering someone in his very uniqueness, in other words, through love. Mm -hmm. Work and love are the main avenues leading up to meaning. But, in, if need be, if you are confronted with a fate you no longer can change, if you are confronted, say, confronted, say, with an incurable disease, with an inoperable cancer, even then you may find a meaning. You may even find the deepest possible, the highest conceivable meaning, because you then have an opportunity to bear witness of the human potential at its best, of the most human of all human capacities, which is to turn a tragedy into a personal triumph, to turn your predicament into an achievement on the human level. No, no animal can, uh, can uh, uh, do anything like this. No animal e uh, uh, 
ask the question of whether it's, it's uh, life has a meaning or not. But no animal can, e can even, is capable of even turning a predicament into an achievement, man alone. Mm -hmm. But if he so does, then he has reached the peak of whatever ma <coughs> man is capable mm -hmm. of. So we can find meaning... go or perform surgery. But after all, rumors are uh, uh, present to the effect that uh, in the final analysis, man is a mortal being. We have to die, and before dying, we have uh, uh, ineluctably to suffer sometimes. As a, as a medical doctor, I must confess mm -hmm. this. So there is certainly no one who is spared with unchangeable situations perhaps for a couple of months, unemployment. And still life retains a meaning. What we need, you see, is not bread alone. And what the unemployed need uh, is not welfare alone. They need a meaning, and a meaning can be found everywhere in the smallest hut. On the other hand, you find people who are millionaires and milliardaires and, and uh, billionaires, and they have no meaning. They kill themselves. On the other hand, I can provi present you uh, heaps of letters I due to unknown reasons I always get from American prisons, you see. <laughs> letters to the effect, only here in prison, a few hundred yards far from the electric chair, I have uh, found at last, found meaning in my life, only here. And even more, people say, I'm happy I've made peace with myself and my life right here in prison under these conditions. So that now we might understand how come that I uh, was justified uh, in saying uh, meaning can be found irrespective even from the environmental situation uh, of a given situation. It depends on yourself. And it, it depends on, on whether or not you are exposed to an indoct indoctrination on uh, uh, American campuses or on uh, analytic, uh, analytic cultures, an indoctrination to the effect that man is nothing but a mechanism, man is nothing than, uh, than uh, the outcome of conditioning or psychodynamic processes. Man is, man is nothing but uh, just a, 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 a computer. If you indoctrinate people along these lines, small wonder if they are purged out from any enthusiasm or idealism. Hmm. What is necessary is to think great of man. Uh, at my age of uh, 72, now a couple of years ago, as you see, in whenever I was in California. And once my, my uh, flight instructor here to wind up here, and you have a crosswind condition, you will uh, fall prey to a drift and uh, right. land south of that place. Right. So you have to intend compass direction north of the place of uh, destination, and you have to embark on what we pilots call crabbing, you see? And it's the same with man. Mm -hmm. If you uh, see man that high, you see, you are corrupting him. He will deteriorate. He will become worse. He will drift, mm -hmm. as it were, morally. Mm -hmm. But if you think of him high, then you make him uh, arrive where he can be. In other words, if we take man, listen, if we take man as he is, we make him worse. On the other hand, if, if we take him as he should be, we help him become what he can be. But this is no longer anything my flight instructor has told me, but this is a verbal, literal quotation from Goethe. <laughs>
Doctor, you very much underline the, the theme of our series. And the title of the show is Man Alive. And it seems to me that for man to be fully alive, he has to find this kind of meaning that you're talking about. And yet there are people uh, who go through life feeling, well, I can, I can make out in this life. I can exist in this life. I can make do because there is an afterlife. There's something better I'm going to. And yet he's not really living to his fullness here, is he? <clears throat> Certainly not. But uh, we have to try, the problem is to maintain the potential meaningfulness of life in spite of its transitoriness. So many patients have confronted me with the question, but doctor, after all, <coughs> everything will be over. Everything is transitory. And then what meaning will remain? And as I view it, I uh, am used to saying what is transitory are only the potentialities, are only the opportunities to fulfill a meaning, being by doing any, uh, something, being by loving someone, being by shouldering courageously uh, and, and honestly a suffering you cannot avoid and uh, even facing your death in a dignified manner in your style, as it were. Mm -hmm.